All right, well, uh, a lot of this is buoyed by the fact it's kind of pointed out, excitement over Trump presidency and what it could bring, uh, cutting taxes, lowering regulations, not a political thing, just a, a feeling that uh, economic spirits will rise along with uh, uh, all these market averages. Uh, Donald Trump responding to, to that development and responding to those who are trying to poo-poo all of this and his election, uh, especially with the fact that he didn't win the popular vote by saying, I would have done better in the election if the winner was based on the popular vote, but I would have campaigned very, very differently. The fact of the matter is, whether you're a fan of this electoral vote or not, there's one way of campaigning for that when it's the electoral vote and quite another if it's just on the popular vote. So on the right and the left, much of a brouhaha over that. To Hadley Heath Manning, former Bush 42 presidential writer, Ned Ryan, Democratic strategist Jim Maurer on if Democrats will ever accept a Donald Trump win. Jim, will they? Will you? Well, this isn't about the past, Neil. It's about the future, and it's that we have a broken system right now where the person who receives the most votes doesn't win, and that's pretty hard to explain. It's hard to defend. But you knew it going in, right? I mean, if, if you know century. those are the rules going in, like it's not how many votes you, uh, you know, points you rack up in, in four quarters in a football game. It's the final score, right? Neil, that's the whole that's point of this election. That's absolutely right, but this is about the this is about the future, about not the past. All right, all right, but but you, so that a popular vote issue, even though we don't campaign on the popular vote, uh, the fact that we have the electoral vote winner being Donald Trump and that he won in those states, Hillary Clinton would have been taken as a given. None of this is on her. None of this is on Democrats. None of this is on their failure to appreciate the fact we elect presidents on an electoral vote. Neil, this is, this is the thing, too, that people have to understand. These are the rules we've played under for over two centuries. And, you know, there are going to be some Democrats that are going to refuse to move on, but I think the Electoral College is one of the, the real geniuses of the, of the founders. And I think one of the shames, Neil, these days is that we don't teach U.S. history and civics like we used to. And so people have to understand where this came from. The Electoral College came when Madison and Hamilton and some of these other guys pushing for a new government realized... We've got to bring the small states in. We've got to get them to vote for this new constitution. We need to give them compromises because every state had an equal vote under the Articles of Confederation. No, I understand so, why, but you also you, have to so, remember, you, Ned, that they wore wigs and powdered wigs but, of that. But, but here's the thing that they wanted to make sure, give the states equal rights. I understand. The I just certainly understand the impetus for it. But if we prevent, were to change it, I understand. But Hadley, but, and I'm not taking a view one thing or the other. If we want to go toward a popular vote, which might happen down the road, it's going to be hard given the, the, the Herculean task to get state legislators to do this as well as Congress at two-thirds margins, right. then we campaign very different, right, Hadley? I mean, then it's a whole different strategy. How would it change? Well, it would be, you're right, Neil, an enormous lift to try to change the Constitution. So let's say Article we did. How would it change? How what would change in vote well, and the would, way people campaign? It would become a tyranny of the majority, it, exactly what the Electoral College was Pure designed democracy. to prevent. Candidates would go to big cities, they would go to big population centers, they would try to jack up their margins in those places, and they would completely ignore voters in less populous areas. So that's, that's the downfall of having a pure democratic system. Our founders understood that pure democracy can also result in tyranny, just like a dictatorship. Well, I understand that, Arnold, but I'm also that kind of, that this, is, this is a weird kind of a quirk, and I think, I think that if we had a popular vote only strategy, candidates would campaign differently, period. But uh, this is something I want to pick up with you, Jim, and it was Senator Joe Manchin, the Democrat of West Virginia, was telling me the Democrats, maybe he was referring to you, have to just get over this and, and, and understand their loss. I want you to listen to this and get a reaction. What do you make of efforts still afoot to deny Donald Trump the victory? Well, you Neil, know, people just got to get over it and go on. I mean, let's, let's, let's get on with governing the, this country making us the uh, world leader uh, and keeping uh, maintaining that superpower status. And that means we all got to get behind our president, whether you voted for him or not. I think what he was saying, Jim, is it's time for you to enter a 12-step program. What do you think of that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. Well, what do you well think? Neil, this, isn't, this, really, this really is not about the 2016 election. It's about the 2020 election. It's about the 2024 election. It's about the future. Forty percent of elections in this century have been awarded to the person who didn't win the most votes. That is a real problem for our republic. Forty uh, percent of almost half threat. have gone. No, no, you're, you're going back into the 1800s now as well. I mean, where right. you could get five, I think, of 40 percent in this century. No, I don't think that's right. Uh, yeah. I, I know mean, five Neil, elections. We've had five presidential elections right. in this century. We've elected five, and we've elected... Oh, I see. I this, agree. This, the focus this, should this, be this, on... Since 2000. 
Neil, let's here, here's the deal. Since 2000. Wait a the, minute. The, the, You're playing the, fast the, and loose with the numbers. All right. But the process, the process by which this is going to change, again, is a long, laborious two-thirds of the House, two-thirds of the Senate, three-fourths of the states. It's not going to happen anytime soon. But going back to what Hadley said, the founders soundly rejected pure democracy. We're a constitutional republic. And they rejected the idea that a candidate with a strong regional base should be able to win national elections. And if you remove California and New York, it's an overwhelming popular vote victory for Trump. If you remove L.A. County and the city of New York City, <laughs> it's also Ned, a win would for you Trump. Been of that, would you have been of that opinion in 2004 when George Bush was winning the popular vote, but had he lost Ohio by another 35, 40,000 votes, he would have lost. These are the rules by which we've played since the, you know, the, the 18th century. It's the rules of the game. It's how All we've right. played. If you don't like the rules, change the rules. But it's going to be a long, laborious process. And by the way, Neil, the people best positioned to pass a constitutional amendment in the current circumstances are Republicans. And I don't see them wanting to do this. All right, Hadley, final thoughts? Well, Neil, people... Yeah, the focus should be on the future, the future of this country coming together as Americans, Republicans and Democrats, addressing issues like health care, the economy, taxes, the national budget. Let's focus on those things instead of talking about right. changing the Constitution, that's going to be an enormous lift and it's simply not going to happen. What were you going to say there, Jim? Well, Neil, people can learn more at themajorityrules.org, but there is a process, the National Popular Vote Interstate Compact, that would accomplish this objective without a constitutional amendment. And Compact. this is about, it's about, work around. about it's something work very, around very of important, the, Constitution. the future of our democracy. The Constitution says state can align their electors however they choose which is exactly what the National Popular Vote Interstate Compact would accomplish. Compacts have to go Just before Congress. It'll still have to go back to be approved by Congress. If you really want to see this happen, a constitutional amendment is the only way to go, and it's not going to happen in the short term. All right. It right. Is Maybe candidates should focus on winning the Electoral College in the future. Exactly. Change well, all I'm saying, guys, is whether you're for the Electoral citizens. College or not, I just think it's disingenuous to say uh, that the popular vote winner wins every time here because you'd have a very different race if you were going just for the popular vote and ignoring the Electoral you vote. Would. So you would. Different strategies. That's right. You, you can't change you the rules after the fact. All right. Well, we'll see. Right. Very, very close. Uh, guys, thank you all very, very much.